Welcome to day 44 of our daily Bible reading. Today, for day 44 of our reading, we have Judges. We are reading from Judges chapter 5 to chapter 9. And in the last in the last video, Deborah and Barak went to they went to fight against against one king against Jabin, the king of Canaan. Today you continue you continue the story. Watch the last video so you get a better understanding of this video. And if you have not seen any of our videos before, check my channel out. You find a playlist named Bible Challenge. Check that playlist out and watch every video under it so that you understand where we're coming from. We're, we've been coming from Genesis. Now we are judges. We're moving on. We are moving on. Chapter 5. Then Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinam, sang on that day, saying, When leaders led in Israel, when leaders lead in Israel, when the people willingly offer themselves, bless the Lord. Yea, O kings, give ye, O princes, I, even I, will sing to the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens poured. The clouds also poured water. The mountains gushed before the Lord. This Sinai before the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jao, the highways were deserted, and the travelers walked along the byways. Village life ceased, it ceased in Israel, until I, Deborah, arose, arose a mother in Israel. They chose new good they chose new gods. Then there was then there was war in the in the gates. Not a shield or spear was seen among forty thousand in Israel. My earth is with the rulers of Israel, who offer themselves willingly to the people. Bless the Lord. Speak, speak, you will ride on white donkeys, who sit in judges' attire, and who walk along the road, far from the noise of the archers, among the waters, among the watering places. There they shall recount the righteous. There, there they shall recount the righteous acts of the Lord. Righteous acts of the Lord. The righteous acts for his villagers in Israel. Then the people of the Lord shall go down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, sing a song. Arise, Balak, and arise, Barak, and lead your captives away, O son of Abinoam. Then the survivors came down, the people against the nobles. The Lord came down for me against the mighty. From Ephraim we are those who roots, whose roots we are in Amalek. After you, Benjamin, with your peoples, from Machir, rulers came down, and from Zebulon, those who bear the recruiter's staff. Someone is knocking on the door. And from and from Zebulon, those who bear the recruiter's staff, and the princes of Issachar, we have Deborah. As Issachar, so was Barak sent into the valley under his command among the divisions of Reuben. These were great reserves. There were great reserves of earth. They did. Why did you sit among the sheepfolds to hear the pipings for the flocks? The divisions of Reuben have great searches of earth. Gilead stayed beyond Jordan, and why did Dan remain on ships? Asher continued at the seashore and stayed by his inlets. Zebulon is a people who jeopardized their lives to the point of death. Naphtali also on the heights of the battlefield. The kings came, came and fought. Then the kings of Canaan fought in Tanakh by the water of Megiddo. They took no spoils of silver. They fought from the heavens. The stars from their courses fought against Caesarea. The torrent of Kishon swept them away. That ancient, that ancient torrent, the torrent of Kishon. Oh, my soul, march on in strength. Then the horses, oofs, then the horses oofs pounded the galloping, galloping of his teeth. Cause mirrors, said the angel of the Lord, causing its inhabitants bitterly, because they did not come to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed among women is Jael, the wife of Eber, the Kenite. Blessed is she among women in tents. He asked for water, she gave milk. She brought out cream in a lordly bowl. She stretched out, she, she stretched 
her hand to the tent peg to the tent peg, her right hand to the workman's armor. She pounded Caesarea, she pierced his head, she split and struck through his temple. At her feet he sank, he fell, he lay still. At her feet he sank, he fell. Where he sank, there he fell dead. The mother of Caesarea looked through the window and cried out through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tires the clatter of his chariots? Our wisest ladies answered her. Our wisest ladies answered her. Yes, she answered herself. Are they not finding and dividing the spoil? To every man a girl or two. For Cicera, plunder of dyed garments, plunder of garments embroidered and dyed. Two pieces of dyed embroidery for the neck of the looter. Thus, let all your enemies perish, O Lord. But let those who love him be like the sun. When it comes out in its in full strength, so the land had rest for forty years. Chapter six. Then the oh again. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years, and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites. The children of Israel made for themselves the dens, the caves, and the strongholds which are in the mountains. So it was whenever Israel had sown, Midianites would come up. Also Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for, for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey, for they would come up with livestock and their tents, coming in as numerous as locusts, both they and their camels were without number, and they would enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel, who said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and brought you out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all who oppressed you, and drove them out from before you, and gave you their land. Also I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terrible tree, which was in Ophra, which was in Ophra, whatever, which belonged to Joash, Joash the Abiezrite, which, while his son Gideon treasured wheat in the winepress, in order to hide this from the Midianite. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in, go in this might of yours, and you shall save and shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Then he said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that, that, it, that it is you who talk to me. Do not depart from here, I pray. Until I come to you and bring out my offering and set it before you, and said, I will wait until you come back. So Gideon went in and prepared a young goat and unleavened bread from an ephah of fine flour. The meat he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and he brought them out to him under the deliberate tree and presented them. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread and lay them on this rock and pour, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the meat and the unleavened bread. And fire rose out of the rock, and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now Gideon perceived that it was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Now Gideon, oh, so. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you, do not fear. You shall not die. Do not fear. You shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it the Lord is peace. To this day, it is still in Ophrah of the Abiez rites. Now, it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, Take your father's young bull, the second bull of 
seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the wooden image that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement, and take the and take the second bull and offer a burnt offering, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men from among his servants and did as the Lord had said to him. But because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day, he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, there, there was the altar of Baal torn down, and the wooden image that was beside it was cut down, and the second bull was being offered on the altar which had been built. So they said to one another, Who has done this thing? And when they had inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Josh, had has done this thing. Then the men of the city said to Josh, Bring out your son that he may die, because he has torn down the, the, daughter, the altar of Baal, and because he has cut down the wooden image that was beside it. But Josh said to all those who, who stood against him, Would you plead for Baal? Which would you save him? Let the one who would plead for him be put to death by money. If he is a god, let him plead for himself, because his altar has been torn down. Therefore, on that day, he called him Jerubal, saying, Let Baal plead against himself. Let Baal, let Baal plead against him, because he has torn down his altar. Then all the Midianites and, and Amalekites, the people of the east, gathered together, and they crossed over and, and encamped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Then he blew the trumpets, and the Abbeer's rites gathered behind him, and he sent messengers through all Manasseh, who also gathered behind him. He also sent messengers to Asher, Zebulon, and Naphtali, and they came up to meet him. So Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said, Look, I shall put a fleece of wood on the treasure floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand, and you, as you have said. And it was so. When he rose early the next morning and squeezed the fleece together, he wrung the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, Do not be angry with me, but let me speak just once more. Let me taste, I pray, just once more with the fleece. Let it now be dry only on the fleece, but on all the ground, let there be dew. And God did so that night. That night. It was dry on the fleece only. Was there was dew on all the ground. Chapter 7 Then Jerubal, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him, rose early and encamped beside the wall of Arod, so that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of Mori in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore, proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And twenty-two thousand of the people returned, and ten thousand remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that of whom I say to you, This one shall go with you the same you shall go the same shall go with you and of whomever i say to you this one shall not go with you the same shall not go so he brought the people down to the water and the people said to gideon everyone and the lord said to gideon everyone who laps from the water with his with his tongue as a dog laps you shall set apart by himself likewise everyone who gets down on his knees to drink and the numbers of those and the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was three hundred men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the three hundred men who lapped, I will save you. I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all other people, let all the other people go, every man to his place. So the people took provision and their trumpets in their hands. And he sent away all the rest of Israel, every man to his tent, and retained those three hundred men. Now the camp of Midian was below him in the tent. It happened at it happened on the same night that the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have delivered it into your hand. But if you are afraid to go down, go down to the camp with Pura your servant, and you shall hear what they say. 
and afterward your hands shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. Then he went down with Purai servants to the outpost of the armed men who were in the camp. Now the Midianites and Amalekites, all the people of the east, were lying in the valley as numerous as locusts, and their camels were without number, as the sand by the seashore in multitude. And when Gideon had come, there was a man telling a dream to his companion. He said, I have had a dream. To my surprise, a loaf of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian. It came to a tent and struck it so that it fell and overturned, and the tent collapsed. Then his companion answered and said, This is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. Into his hand God has delivered Midian and the whole camp. And so it was. When Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation that he worshipped, he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the camp of Midian into your hand. Then he di divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet into every man's hand with empty pitchers and torches inside the pitchers. And he said to them, Look at me and do likewise. Watch, and when I come to the edge of the camp, you shall do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, and I and all who are with me, then you also blew, then you then you also blow the trumpet on every side of the whole camp and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outpost of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just as they had posted the watch, and they blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers that were in their hand. Then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers. They held the torches in their left hand and the trumpets in their right hand for blowing, and they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And every man stood in his place all around the camp. And the whole army ran and cried out and fled. Then the three hundred blew the trumpets. When the three hundred blew the trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his companion throughout the whole camp. And the army fled to Beth Akashia toward Zerera, as far as the border of Abel Meholah by Tabath. And the men of Israel gathered together from Naphtali, Asher, and all Manasseh and pursued the Midianites. Then Gideon sent messengers through, throughout all the mountain of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize them from the watering places as far as Beth Parah and the Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered together and seized the watering places as far as Beth Parah and the Jordan, and they captured two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb they killed at the winepress of Zeb. They pursued Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of the Jordan. Chapter 8 Now the men of Ephraim said to him, Why have you done this to us by not calling us when you went to fight with the Midianites? And they reprimanded and they reprimanded him sharply. So he said to them, What have I done now in comparison with you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abiezer? God has delivered into your hands the princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb, and what was I able to do in comparison with you? When then their anger toward him subsided, when he said that, then when Gideon, not then, when Gideon came to the Jordan, he and the three hundred men who were with him crossed over, exhausted but still, but still in pursuit. Then he said to the men of Sukkot, "Please give loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are exhausted, and I am pursuing Zeba and Zamuna, king of Midian." And the leaders of Zokot said, Are the hands of Zeba and Samuel now in your hand, that we should give bread to your army? So Gideon said, For this cause, when the Lord has delivered Zeba and Zamla into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. Then he went up from there to Penuel and spoke to them in the same way. And the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Zokot had answered. So he also spoke to the men of Penuel, saying, When I come back in peace, I will tear down this door. Then Zeba and Zamuna were at Karko, and their armies with them, about 15,000, and all who were left of, the, of all the army of the people of the east, for 120,000 men who drew the sword had fallen. Then Gideon went up by the road of those who dwelt in tents on the east of Noba, and Jogeba, and Jogbeha, and he attacked the army while the camp felt secure. When Zeba and Zamuna fled, he pursued them, and he took the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zamuna, and routed the whole army. Then Gideon, the son of Joash, 
returned from battle from the ascent of earth and he caught a young man of the men of Sukkot and interrogated him and he rose down for him the leaders of Sukkot and his elders seventy seven men then he came to the men of Sukkot and said here are Zeba and Zalmana about whom you read whom you ridiculed me, saying, At the hands of Zeba and Zalmana, now in your hand, that you should give bread to your weary men. And he took the elders of the city, and the thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men, he taught the men of Sukkot. Then he tore down the tower of Penel and killed the men of the city. And he said to Zeba and Zalmana, What kind of men were they whom you killed at Tabor? So they answered, As you are, so were they. Each one resembled the son of a king. Then he said, they were, my bro they were my brothers, the sons of my mother. As the Lord lives, if you had let them live, I would not kill you. And he said to Jetha, his firstborn, Rise, kill them. But the youth would, would not draw his sword, for he, was afraid, for he was afraid, because he was still a youth. So Zeba and Samna said, Rise yourself and kill us, for as a man is, so is, is his strength. So Gideon arose and killed Zeba and Samna, and took the crescent ornaments that were on their camel's necks. Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, both you and your son, and your grandson also, for you have delivered us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, nor shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Then Gideon said to them, I would like to make a request of you, that each of you would give me the earring from his plunder. That each of you would give me the earrings from his plunder, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelite. So they said, We will gladly give them. And they spread out a garment, and each man threw into it the earrings from his plunder. Now the weight of the gold earrings that he requested was 1,700 shekels of gold, besides the crescent ornaments, pendants, and purple robes which were on the kings of Midian, and besides the chain that were around their camel's length around their camel's necks. Then Gideon made it into an effort and set it upon and set it up in a city, Ophrah, and all Israel played the allot with it there. It became a snare to Gideon and to his house. Thus Midian was subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted their heads no more, and the country was quiet for forty years in the days of Gideon. Then Jerubal, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in his own house. Gideon had seventy sons. Seventy sons who were his own offspring. For he, had, for he had many wives, and his concubine, who were in Shechem, also bore him a son, whose name, whose name he called Abimelech. Now, Gideon, the son of Joash, died at a good old age and was buried in the tomb of, his, of Joash, his father, in Ophrah of the Abia's rites. So it was as soon as Gideon was dead that the children of Israel again played the harlot with the bows and made Baal and made Baal buried their God. Thus, the children of Israel did not remember the Lord their God, who had delivered them from the hands of all their enemies on every side, nor did they show kindness to the house of Jeroboam, Gideon, in accordance with the good he had done for Israel. Chapter 9, the last, the last chapter. Then Abimelech, the son of Jeroboam, went to Shechem, to his mother's brothers, and spoke with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Please, speak in the hearing of all the men of Shechem, which is better for you, that all the seventy of the sons of Jeroboam reign over you, or that one reign over you. Remember that I am your own flesh and bone. And his mother's brothers spoke all these words concerning him in the hearing of all the men of Shechem, and their heart was inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. So they gave him seventy shekels of silver from the temple of Baal Berith, which with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless men, and they followed him. Then he went to his father's house at Ophrah and killed his brothers, the seventy sons of Jerubal, on, on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubal, was left because he hid himself, and all the men and all the men of Shechem gathered together, all, all of Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king beside the Terenbridge tree at the pillar which was at the pillar that was in Shechem. Ooh. Now when they told now when they told Jotham, he went and stood on top of Mount Gerizim and lifted his voice and cried out, and he said to them, Listen to me, O you men of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went forth 
to anoint a king over them. And they said to the olive tree, reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, should I cease giving my oil? Should I cease giving my oil with which they honor God and men and go to sway over trees? Then the tree said to the fig tree, you come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, should I cease my sweetness and my good fruit and go to sway over kings? Then the tree said to the vine, you come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, should I cease my new wine? which cheers both God and men, and go to sway over trees. Then all the trees said to all the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in truth you anoint me as king over you, then come and take shelter in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if you acted in truth and sincerity in making Abimelech, Abimelech king, and if, you have dealt, and if you have dealt well with Jerubal and his house, and I've, and I've done to him as he deserves. My father fought for you, risk, risked his life, and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. But you have risen, but you have risen up against my father's house this day, and killed his seventy sons on one stone, and made Abimelech the son of his female servant king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If then you have acted in truth and sincerity with Jerubal, and with his house this day. Then rejoice in Abimelech, and let and let him rejoice, and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and Beth Milo, and let fire come from the men of Shechem and from Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled, and he went to Bear and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech, for fear of Abimelech his brother. After Abimelech has re had reigned over Israel three years, God sent a spirit of ill will between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the crime done to the seventy sons of Jerubal might be settled, and their blood be laid on Abimelech, their brother, who killed them, and on the men of Shechem, who aided him in the killing of his brothers. And the men of Shechem set men in ambush against him on the tops of the mountains, and they robbed all who passed by them along that way. And it was told Abimelech, Now Gal, the son of Ebed, came with his brothers and went over to Shechem, and the men of, she and the men of Shechem put their, put their confidence in him. So they went out into the field and gathered, grip and gathered grapes from their vineyards and showed them and made merry. And they went into the house of their God and ate and drank and cursed Abimelech. Then God, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech and who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Is he not the son of Jerubal, and is not Zebul his officer? Serve the men of Amor, the father of Shechem, but why should we serve him? If only if only these people were under my authority, then I would remove Abimelech. Abimelech. So he said to Abimelech, Increase your army and come out. Then Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the word of God, the son of Ebed. His anger was a road. When Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of God, the son of Ebed, his anger was aroused, and he sent messengers to Abimelech secretly, saying, Take note. God, the son of Ebed, and his brothers have come to Shechem, and here they are, fortifying the city against you. Now therefore, get up by night, you and all the people who are with you, and lie in wait in the field. And it shall be, as soon as the sun is up in the morning, that you shall rise early and rush upon the city. And when he and, and when he and all the people, and when he and the people who are with him come out against you, you may then do to them as you find opportunity. So Abimelech and Abimelech and all the people who were with him rose by night and lay in wait against Shechem in four companies. Then God, the son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entrance of the city gate. Abimelech and the people, when God, the son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entrance of the city gate, Abimelech and the people who were with him rose from lying in wait. And when God saw the people, he said to Zebul, Look, people are coming down from the tops of the mountains. But Zebul said to him, You see the shadows of the mountains, as if they were men. So God spoke again and said, See, people are coming down from the center of the land, and another company is coming from the diviners terebinth tree. Then Zebul said to him, Where indeed is your mouth now? With which you said, Who is Abimelech, that we should serve them, that we should serve him? And not these the people whom you despised? Go out, if you will. And fight with them now. So Gal went out, leading the men of Shechem, and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled from him. And many fell wounded to the to the very entrance of the gate. 
Then Abimelech dwelt at Aruma, and Zebul drove out Gal and his brothers, so that they would not dwell in Shechem. And it came about, and it came about on the next day that the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech. So it took his people, divided them into three companies, and lay in wait in the field. And he looked, and there were the people coming out of the city. And he rose against them and attacked them. Then Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood at the entrance of the gate of the city. And the other two companies rushed upon all who were in the fields and killed them. So Abimelech fought against the city all that day. He took the city and killed the people who were in it, and he demolished the city and sold and sold it with salt. Now when all the now when all the men of the tower of Shechem had heard that they entered the strong oat of the temple of the temple of the god Beris, and it was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. Then Abimelech went up to Mount Zalman, he and all the people who were with him, and Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bow from the tree and took it and laid it on his shoulder. Then he said to the people who were with him, What have you seen me do? Make haste and do as I have done. So each of the people likewise cut down his own bow and followed Abimelech, put them against the stronghold, against the stronghold, and set the stronghold on fire above them, so that all the people of the tower of Shechem died, about a thousand men and women. Then Abimelech went to Tebes, Tebes, and he camped against Tebes and took it. But there was a strong tower in the city, and all the men and women, all the people of the city, fled there and shut themselves in. Then they went up to the top of the tower. So Abimelech came as far as the tower and fought against it, and he drew near the door of the tower to burn it, by, to burn it with fire. But a certain woman dropped an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Then he called quickly to the young man, his armor-bearer, and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me, lest men say of me, a woman killed me. So his young man trust him through, and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed, every man to his place. Thus God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech, which he had done to his father, by killing his seventy brothers. And all the evil of the men of Shechem, God returned on their own head. And on them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubal. The end of today's video, it was a very long one, that's two minutes. Okay, right after this video, I will record the the forty five forty five video. Yeah, thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the day forty five video. Stay tuned.